Hello there and welcome to my little arty corner on YouTube. My name's Angela, Angela Porter and amongst other things I'm an artist and I'm an artist who loves to help encourage people to create, to draw, to use pattern and colour. Hopefully a lot better than I use colour anyway. Pattern I'm all right with is the colour that vexes me and just to enjoy that process to relax and so on. Now oddly I've been talking about this for a while and I checked my Facebook a little earlier today. It's about it's nearly half past 11 in the morning here in in the UK in the valleys of South Wales and it's the 20th of um, it's April <laughs> it's 2022 and it's a Wednesday and I had to look on my Facebook um, not long before I came up to record a video later than usual and there were a couple of posts with quotes in and I thought I need to share them with you because they sort of say what I'm trying to say perhaps in words that are better than I can say because they're both from authors. The first one is from Kurt Vonnegut, 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 Vonnegut. Go into the arts. I'm not kidding. The arts are not a way to make a living. They are a very human way of making life more bearable. Practicing an art, no matter how well or badly, is a way to make your soul grow, for heaven's sake. Sing in the shower, dance to the radio, tell stories, write a poem to a friend, even a lousy poem. Do it as well as you possibly can. You will get an enormous reward. You will have created something. And I think that's the point here of a sketchbook is that you do what you can, the best you can. It doesn't matter if you're doing it lousy. It doesn't matter if you're doing it well. All that matters is that you're enjoying it and you're creating something and it's feeding something inside you, something in your soul, something that makes a smile appear in your heart. And I think that's so important. The other one was by another author. This is an author I actually do know. I've never read any Kurt Vonnegut and I need to, I think. But Neil Gaiman is one who I've read some of his books and I've got a particular fondness for um, Good Omens that he did with Terry Pratchett. And this is what he says. The one thing that you have that nobody else has is you. Your voice, your mind, your story, your vision. So write and draw and build and play and dance and live as only you can. And I think those two, two quotes just sum up art for me. I'm lucky enough I do make a living from art, but not everybody can. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't create for the sheer joy of creation, for feeding that something inside us. And I think that's important. I think those two may end up being bits of hand letteredness from me or parts of them. It's a lot to hand letter, but I shall see. I shall work on that. Anyway, back to drawing things. Today we carry on with some oyster shells. I've got three that are drawn in a pretty similar way, but I use different, slightly different colouring mediums. I've used um, alcohol markers on all of them. So I have used, oh gosh, it's hopefully auto-focusing. Yep, we've got it fixed. Marvellous. So this one was just alcohol markers. This one was alcohol markers, but with a graphite pencil to add the shadow. It does tend to make it look a bit mucky. My opinion, you may love the look. And this one was um, just one alcohol marker and then extra colour added for shadows and so on with coloured pencils. So today I've got some um, alcohol markers out. Now somebody, I think it was Art By Me, asked what colours have I'm using. Well, they're all peachy, peachy pinks, really. Um, and the names of these ones, because it depends what brand you've got. So I can give you the numbers, but they're not going to relate to the particular brand unless you have, happen to have the Ohuhu, Ohuhu art markers. So I'm using an R20, which is a powder pink. So that's in the R 
set of colours, the reds. I've got an R21, which is a fruit pink, which again is in the red. I've got a warm grey, so I've got WG and I've got another warm grey, WG01. So the 01 is a light, it's the lightest warm grey, and then the next one's the next darkest. For some reason I haven't got a WG2 in the set, but it doesn't worry. And then the other pink I've got is I've got an R9, which is a pastel rose. And they're all in the reds, which surprised me because I thought some of them were um, yellow reds or red on yeah, yellow reds. But there we are. So let's draw a different kind of oyster shell today. Um, trying to think here of ones that we could do that are fairly simple. That would be interesting. I say fairly simple because the complexity comes from adding patterns. So let's have a look. I'm going to draw one. Starting with this kind of wobbly kind of shape. Okay, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine. It needs to be fair. I think I could have done with making this a bit, bit broader, but it'll work. And then I'm going to put an edge on the top bit. And I'm going to start adding some layers to this bottom bit, but I am going to add them literally as layers. So I'm not going to try and join them up to the edge. I'm trying to create the bottom of the shell. So I want these sort of getting perhaps a little bit shorter as I go along. And then perhaps quite a bit shorter, depending on the shape you want. And I think that could work quite nicely. Now, this would be the inside of the shell and I think I might because this is an oyster shell. Let's pop a pearl in and have it just poking out a little bit. It's a big pearl but I can live with that and I'm just going to pop in a little highlight like that and I've realised what I've done here. I've drawn this and I really need to leave this. So I could have left this to dry, left this to dry while I mentioned the quotes. But I hope you don't mind me reading those quotes to you. Um, if I rem I'll do my best to remember. By the time I've done what I need to do to put this as a video to be uploaded and stuff, processed it and what have you, I may forget. But I'll try not to and I'll put the text of those two quotes into the description box. Um, and they might actually become part of my information if I could, if you can put that much information about your channel there. Um, because I think, I think they've said it more eloquently than I can about how I feel about what I'm doing here and the focus for this. Okay, I shall grit my teeth and go for it. Okay, I'm going to start with my lightest warm brown here because I want to add the shadows where this will be that little bit darkest. And I think if I use this, and I've told you I am not the world's best colorist. I really am not. Digital art I'm not so bad with. My colors always, well, yeah. My colour choices can be abysmal, that's what I was doing this morning, was adding colour to some sample lettering in my sketchbook. Somebody should tell me that I really need to, <laughs> to keep it really simple and to monochrome I think may be the way to go, or mostly monochrome with perhaps a splash of colour that actually goes. Could you not? sometimes wonder why on earth I do this to myself. You can see that these are quite a bit different in colour, in, in your intensity of colour. 
but by using the lighter one over the darker one I can fade it and get them to blend a bit better. And I will go into the little nooks and crannies as well and where I've lightened it a bit too much I can go back and add just a bit more of the darker colour just to intensify that shadow where I really want it darker. And I'm deliberately not giving it very clean edges, as it were. I want this to look feathered, and if there is some texture there, perhaps. So that'll do. Okay, for that. Alrighty. Oh, oh gosh, let's try and get the right end open. Ugh. Tell me what I did need, and I didn't get out, but I will do now, because that's an easy find. Is the colourless blender. I say an easy fan. There it is. It's easy if I take my glasses off. I've got the colourless blender here and what this really is, they're, they're more like a bleaching pen and I just want to lighten the edge here just that little bit. And perhaps encourage it to spread up towards the, the edge there. Bearing in mind, I am going to put colour on the top of this. I'm doing shadows first, then the colour, and then we'll have a look at adding pattern. Makes sense, yeah? Yeah, of course it does. Okay, so I now want to put some shadow with a, with a warm brown, not the colourless blender. It's the only thing that's a pain about alcohol markers is the, the way the lids snap on so tightly. I know it's necessary because it keeps stops them from drying out, it gives an airtight seal, but sheesh, it's make it hard work for to get inside. So I'm just going to add some all the way along the edge there, the bottom edge especially. If it spills over into the area underneath that line I'm not too worried and here I'm just going to tease it down perhaps to on this side towards the middle of this I used Tombow Fudenosuke pen to draw this bold bold black lines and then I'm going to use a darker grey just to add that little hint of more shadow just along the bottom edge of this particular layer and I'm going to go to the sides of this and I'm going to extend that shadow underneath a little bit this little section just to bring it lift this up that little bit this will do is it'll give it a, a darker undertone compared to the rest of the pink so it will the shadow will shine through well not the shadow shine I think right the way along the bottom I might just need that's colourless blender there we go and there's no excuse for me not knowing which end is which it's the one with the grey um, band round it I'm looking for because that's the one that has the um, brush tip which is the one I want and this one I'm doing the same thing as I did with the other lines but I'm not instead of using the darker brown I'm using the lighter warm warm grey I say brown this actually works nicely because it's actually based on red, which is great. And um, so we've got that done. Okay, let me put those out of the way. Then I've got my red, um, the peachy pink. So I'm going to start with the powder pink and I'm going to fill all of this in. I, ooh, that did shift some of the pen. 
but as I plan to add some texture to these I wasn't planning on adding texture to the I've just really no this is the lightest pink picked out doesn't look it but also I, I I reminding myself as well as you that these do dry lighter than they appear and I'm going to fill this section in with that just to add that peachy colour I may not may add some of the darker colours towards the bottom but I may not I'll see how I feel when I when this is done because again I'm looking for um, oh, the pearl oh, did it again so here for the pearl I am adding some shadows in the bottom I'm trying to leave a, a nice white space on the other side I've, I drew a highlight in and I'm regretting that now but I can add some of this and I might just add a bit of the the bleaching stuff along the edges here just to lighten this up it's not bleach it's a blend alcohol blending pen clear clear below yeah a colorless blender that's what i'm looking for okay so now i can add start to add some some of the deeper colors here again to intensify shadows more than anything and to give some interest you can see perhaps that the that brown there is is changing to a more pinky red which is what i wanted so i am going to do the same here it's more like a master class in coloring from somebody who doesn't really well, I don't think I know what I'm doing when it comes to colour, put it that way. Other people may disagree with me on this. And then I've got the darkest colour, which I'm going to just keep mostly to the edge. And I will come back with the um, middle colour just to blend this out a bit. And then the lighter colour to blend them over overall. This is what needs to be done with alcohol markers is it's this dance that you do between light. Um, in this case I've worked from light to medium to dark, back to medium, back and then eventually I'll go back to light. And it's how you get a nice blend of colours and um, get the intensity that you're looking for. So it seems a bit of a potch and I suppose it is in a way but it's the same kind of effort I, I make or take when I'm adding colour to um, digitally. That's the word I was looking for, digital colour. And uh, there is a dance between the intensity of colours I'm using and the effects that I'd like to achieve with them. Obviously, it's, you know, digital art, I can add glows and soft lights easily. Here I have to remember to leave those areas that I want that in. Sort of like basically empty or use um, other pens or media on the top. And this is why I love, I do love digital art <laughs> for this reason that I can do a lot more in about the same amount of time it's taken me to do this because of the tools available. But nevertheless, I say that, and I must probably actually take a lot longer to colour in using digital media. I've got the added, I've got the added problem with digital media of um, uh, if I don't use a limited colour palette, I end up with colours and I go, oh, what 
so thinking and starting mostly all over. Keep the bits I like and just use those colours going forward. Could you not? So there we go. So that's a bit moist of alcohol markers. So I'm using peachy colours and rosy colours. I could sneak a little bit of lavender in and I might do that actually. Let me have a look. A little bit of purple in the shadows as well. I think that would work. So the zip you heard was me opening this. I'm looking for the colour I'm looking for. There we go. Looking, of course I'm looking for the colour I'm looking for. I wouldn't be looking for the colour I'm not looking for. This is mauve shadow. It's still quite a light colour. But I think that if I add some of that here, it will add a bit of a cooler tone. And we'll add some interest on side as well. So I'm just looking here at how I want this to fade up. I think that could work quite nicely. And I think I need to go back with the yeah, this warm brown here for my pearl. I'm just softening just the very edges there because it had dried very, very pale. So I think that'll be all right. Okay, we've got a floating pearl. Okie dokes, that's good. I'll move those out the way before I throw them everywhere, as I can do. So there's that. Okie dokes. No, I don't want an F, I want an O1. Now, have I been sensible? Me insensible? Yeah. I would have looked perhaps for a di instead of black a different colour, but I've used black so. Um, and the others. So let's go with black here. This particular channel here, I do want to do something with because I've I've managed to smudge the ink, and I think I'm going to. I was going to put some perks in, but I think I want to go with something that will mimic the. I was going to say frilly edge. But it's sort of like a, a, a randomly frilly edge to the piece here. So I'm doing little arches. I'm just going to move the paper to make it easier for me to continue drawing them. I'm not trying to keep them a consistent size really. It's more that I'm trying to make sure that I don't leave them too short of the upper line. Or, I really don't want to go outside that line, but if I do, it's no big shake. Just thicken the line and it was deliberate, wasn't it? So I've got that there as an edge. It needs something here though, just to differentiate it perhaps, or to add that little bit of shadow or weight density of ink at the bottom. Just to make it feel that we've got Perhaps these are sticking out along the side. Did you know that the eyes of giant clams are blue? How do I know that? That was my very first question in my very first ever game of Trivial Pursuit. And I actually guessed it right. I didn't know the answer. I guessed it though. And I got it right. And they have loads and loads of eyes along the rims. So this does look a bit like a giant clam, except it doesn't open that much. This one here, I'm not entirely sure Easter shells will open that much, but they are today. This one is. And um, yeah, so they say you never forget your first Trivial Pursuit question. Well, that's what I've been told and I certainly haven't. A long time since I've played it. There we are. I've just put a fine line in this section just to. So that is the idea of a border. So this next one I'm going to put a pattern in. And um, I think I'm. I think I'll keep this one all simple. 
possibly. No, I will. And I'm going to do the same thing in alternate layers. Alternate what I do. So this one will have this pattern in. So that's the biggest separation between the two, but that's fine. I can live with that. It is what it is. And unless you point it out, nobody will notice. That's my theory. So it's not really a big ups. It's just I must remember to, to make sure I colour that in properly. Otherwise it will stand out as being different. Or a lot more different than the others because they're all different. Yeah. Trying to do things that are identical by hand. There are people who can do it. I think perhaps at one time I would have. But nowadays I like the more human touch. The touch that says, Angela did this and her hand's a bit wobbly today. Or she hasn't got her right glasses on. Which is true, I've got the ones that I need to be a bit further away from the paper than I currently am. So if my head creeps towards the paper, so I'm, my nose is nearly touching, which is how I often draw, though my back doesn't like it anymore, then everything becomes blurry again. And I can feel the strain on my eyes. So where are the other pair of glasses? Well, they're somewhere. At the moment, I'm not entirely sure where. But I'll turn up there. They always do. glasses all over the house. Of various kinds, of course. Reading and I have bifocals for out and about so I can see at a distance I read things close up. For intermediate I have to take my glasses off. There's somewhere in between the two, which I can live with. That's fine. OK, so I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. I really like this down here. Part of me wishes I'd done another layer here, but there's nothing I can do about that now. This layer here, I think I'm going to do this with little black stripes because I just think this makes things look so darn cute. It's really whimsical and fun. Just some black and white, well, black and peach stripes because I coloured these in. And I'm going to start bending them in the other direction now as I go towards the other side of the clam or the oyster shell. And, um, So you have that feeling that this might not be flat, but it could be curved. Well, I hope that's the illusion you're getting. I can't actually see it at the moment. It's one of those things that I have to stand away from and go, oh yeah, I can see that. If not, it's quite a pretty little pat bit of pattern. And the last thing I need to do before I turn to a white gel pen is to add some pattern inside this area. And I don't want to put lines or anything in there. But I do want to do something that helps the colour go backwards and it feels like there's something here. I could do lines going down, but I really don't want to do that. So what I think I'll do is I'm going to do my favourite little bursts, or whatever they're called. These little, almost like little tiny little bubbles have popped, like in a... In a Fizzy drink, sparkling drink. So. But it gives a lovely texture. And as I put them close together here, I get a greater density of ink. So I increase that idea of that this is in 
shadow and pop some behind. So if I have plenty there that seem to be behind the pearl. And then towards the edge, I can draw ones that are much bigger, so they're much more open. A lot more space, colour, a lot less ink. And it just helps to give that feeling that we're going from an intense shadow to something that's a bit lighter, perhaps. Like so. So I'm really quite happy with that. Um, Happy-ish. Happy-ish. And I'm going to use a gel pen. I've got, oh, look at that, an ATC card. It's fine, I can use it as a piece of scrap card. I've got plenty of paper. Okay, and I'm going to fill the middle of these with some white dots. And they will show up especially in the darker areas down here, which is what I want. And that perhaps gives the idea that we've got a little bit of, you know how sometimes you've got a surface and it looks kind of rough, but it catches that light just slightly in places. Almost like, I suppose it glistens a bit, but a textural glisten, not a kind of slimy glistening. I think that's what I want to suggest there. And then on the outsides, here I'm definitely going to put some white in the peachy bits. I'm not sure, I almost probably won't try and fill them with, entirely with white because I'll end up making a mess. But just putting some in the middle will work. And I'm going to go back and add a little white dot in the middle of each of these black sections, like so. Because it's that little sparkle, little highlight there. Okay, I'm not happy with this area here at all. And I'm not entirely sure what I can do about it because I've got a sneaky suspicion that if I try to cover the black ink with gel pen, I may pick some of the pigment up. I'm going to try dotting over the top of it. And I'll leave a white area here as a highlight as well. So, there's nothing you can't fix really. And I think on my whole of my pearl, I'm going to add this, these little white dots. Close together where I want the highlight to be greatest and further apart where there's a shadow. It's not perfect, but it's better. So if I draw this again, I've got a reference then to go, right, okay, let's not draw the black bit in. Let's use light and shadow. And for the others, I think I'm just going to, oh, gel pen's dried. It does this if I don't use it for a moment. Not just me. It is what it is. Nature gel pens, especially as I'm not writing with them. I can't write with a gel pen. I kid you not. I don't know why. It might be the angle I hold pens at to write. Might be that I press too hard or press too light with them because I'm aware you need a lighter touch with them. But dear goodness, me and gel pens do not get on particularly. Dots are fine. We're happy. We, we, can, we can agree that dotting's okay and perhaps the occasional line, but there we go. And there it is today's completed Easter. That's not bad, 34 minutes, given that I'd read you, I talked a lot, a lot of waffle at the beginning, a lot of encouragement. So I'm just going to read for you, as you can see that, the quote and the last bit. 
Do it as well as you possibly can. You will get an enormous reward. You will have created something. And that's all that matters. If it makes you smile inside, if you enjoy the process, then that's all that matters. And you'll also learn by doing this. Practice, trying things out. I'm giving you some ideas of how I can get things to work vaguely for me. I'm not the best at colour, but I'll share what I know, my wisdom. And I must say, with this, this series here and with what's going on in my sketchbooks and um, with colour, I am definitely, definitely veering towards alcohol markers as my medium, my traditional medium of choice. Seriously, I really am. <laughs> oh, nightmare. But we shall see, because that'll change to the um, water-based markers, I'm sure, at some time. I too tend to go through what my favourites are. Anyway, so one more done. And we've got space for some more down here. So I won't see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday. Thursday, I focus on the colouring template for this week. But I'll see you again on Friday. So plenty of time to draw your oysters. And the world is your oyster, should you choose. Your arty world, your sketchbook is definitely your oyster. And so enjoy spending some time in there. If you share on social media or send me a private message, then I'd love to see what you do. Seriously, I would. And I won't be, I'm not critical. I just love to see how people express themselves. It won't be like mine but that's fine because it'll be like you and your way. This was supposed to be an oyster shell, but it looks like some very strange alien flower at the moment, or perhaps it's, it's an opening into another existence. There we go. I'm telling a story. I better go. Take care for now. Ta-ra.